In this tutorial, we're going to create a stunning 3D logo inside the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started. Let's kick things off by creating a new Fusion composition, then head over to the Fusion tab. Now we're going to bring in an SVG file, which is a vector file that you can create in Illustrator or download from Google. To do this, click on the Fusion option in the top bar, go to Import, and select SVG. Locate the SVG file on your computer, click Open, and a pop-up window will appear. Simply click OK. Next, connect the output of the SVG file to the Media Out node. We now have our Insta logo ready to work with. When you click here, you'll find various nodes, some labeled as Path, representing different sections of the logo. To transform the logo into a 3D version, we'll utilize these paths with the S Polygon node. Ensure you have version 18.6 installed. Press Shift plus Space, search for the S Polygon node, and drag it to one of the viewers to inspect it closely. Click on Path 1, press Ctrl plus C to copy it. Then click on S Polygon, go to the Inspector window, right-click, and select Paste Settings. We now have the outer part of the logo. Let me scale it down briefly to show you. By the way, you can recreate this process in Fusion by adding an S Polygon and shaping each part of the logo. You just need a PNG. However, I recommend using Illustrator for this task. Alright, I have copied the path again. Now press F2 to rename the S Polygon node. Let's call it Border 1. Click on it and add Extrude 3D, then drag it to the viewer and we have our 3D shape. The Extrude 3D node functions similarly to Text 3D, allowing you to adjust extrusion depth, bevel, and create a fully 3D effect. Let's continue, add a Merge 3D node and name it Main Merge. Then add another merge before it and name it Parent 1. Once that's done, include a Render 3D node and complete the initial 3D setup. Here I've converted the second path to 3D. You may not notice any changes as it lacks color and appears similar. Drag the main merge to the viewer to view all nodes. Click on the first extrude 3D and add a replace material 3D node. Copy the background one node and paste it here, connecting its output to the replace material 3D for shading. Repeat the same process for the second one and you'll achieve a result like this. Reorganize all the nodes up to parent one, select them and add an underlay node. You can adjust the color by navigating to this section. To create the square part, add two S polygon nodes and rename them as inner square and outer square. Click on the outer square and add extrude 3D, then connect its output to main merge. Click on the path. If you see on the viewer it will highlight, just copy it, then click on the outer square. Go to inspector window and paste it like before. Do the same for inner square. Next click on the outer square and add S boolean, connecting the output of inner square to it. To shape it like this, click on the boolean, go to the inspector window, and change the operation to subtract. And here we have it. I have added the small circle and connected it via S Boolean, but it's not visible. To view it, we need to change the operation to Union. To create the circle shape in the middle, add two S Polygon nodes and rename them as Inner Circle and Outer Circle and paste the paths correctly. Once done, click on the Outer Circle and add S Boolean. Connect the output of Inner Circle to it. Change the operation to Subtract. Now connect the output of S-Boolean 3 via S-Merge, and we're all set. Now let's make the logo thicker and design it properly to give it the actual 3D look. Before proceeding, delete the unnecessary nodes. Rearrange the nodes and add an underlay for a clean setup. Now let's connect the output of Render 3D to Media Out. Okay, so first, let's make the main body of the logo thicker. Click on Extrude 3D, go to the Inspector window, and increase the extrusion depth to around 0.12. Now our logo is thicker, but it's not clearly visible. Let's set up a lighting system before proceeding. Click on Render 3D and enable lighting and shadows. You may notice the logo appearing darker in the 2D viewer, but we want lights to affect the 3D viewer as well. So click here and select lights from the options. Much better. Add a new Merge 3D node after Main Merge. Then add a directional light to it. The reason for adding a new merge is to animate the main merge while keeping the light stationary. To position the light properly, first, check the box called Use Target. Then move the light slightly further from the logo by adjusting the Z offset. Increase the Y offset to raise it a bit higher. Experiment with the X offset as well. Adjust these values accordingly and play with the rotation until you achieve a visually appealing result. Let's enhance the design because if you notice, the edges of our shape are quite sharp. So click on Extrude 3D. Increase the bevel depth and width slightly for a smoother look. Experiment with these values until you achieve a desirable edge. Once satisfied, copy the node, 
delete the current extrude 3D of border 2 and paste the copied node. Connect output of this node to the replace material 3D. Now we also have the purplish color to the shape. To enhance the inner parts of the logo, click on extrude 3D and increase the extrusion until the design is visible. Adjust the Z offset to view it on both sides, ensuring the thickness matches. As the back area of the logo may appear dark, temporarily move the light on top of the logo. I recommend copying or noting down the values for re Carefully adjust the Z offset to ensure both sides look the same. Once done, increase the bevel depth and width. If the design looks satisfactory, reposition the light to its previous location. If you click on the Custom tab, you will see a graph. Click on it and create four corners like mine. Select each one and give them a curve similar to mine. When you compare the before and after, you will notice that our design looks much more polished. To create a simple animation, click on the main merge node. Go to frame 0 and add a keyframe for the Z offset. Move to frame 30 and add another keyframe. Return to frame 0 and move the logo until it's out of view. Additionally, add a keyframe for the Y angle. Move to around frame 60 and add another keyframe. Go back to frame 0 and change the value. For example, I will do minus 720. Let's preview it. Open the spline editor and select both keyframes together. Press S and then T. Click on the lock icon and change the value to 45. This will make the animation smoother. To add finishing touches, click on the render 3D node. Add optical flow and adjusted smoothness value to around 25. Next, add vector motion blur for a more dynamic effect. You can also add motion blur by accessing the settings tab of render 3D, but using vector motion blur may provide a better result. This is the final result. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to check out my other videos for more content.